although not really a color tutorial, I just want to talk about the importing of an image sequence and interpreting footage because while I was preparing the next tutorial I came across an issue and I thought this is something that you really need to know. Sometimes you want to bring in an image sequence, it can be a PNG sequence, it could be a Photoshop sequence, a JPEG sequence, a TARG or a TIFF, a DPX, a whole series of different sequences that you can bring them in and Adobe Premiere Pro doesn't really know how it should deal with that sequence when it comes in. So we're going to open an image sequence and we're going to show how to interpret the footage and what problems you have if you don't get the footage interpreted properly. So I want to bring it into my footage folder so I'm going to control on the PC, command on the Mac, double click to open that folder and then I'm actually just going to do control I or command I to open the importer and here is my piece of footage. This is courtesy of Adobe and it's a DPX image sequence. Now notice at the bottom you do have a checkbox that says image sequence. So if you want an individual image from it, you don't want this checked, but if you want Adobe to be able to see this as being a complete image sequence, i.e. one piece of, if you like, video, and treat it as a single item, then you must click the image sequence button. So now we will be importing an image sequence. So when I click open, it comes in as an image sequence and I get the video file. Bear in mind there's no sound with this particular one. Now if I want to create a sequence based on this image sequence, I take this one and I drag it down to the new sequence icon and let go. And what happens is I get a very squished image. This is not the way it is supposed to look. Clearly it looks completely wrong. Now what's going on here is that Premiere Pro doesn't know what the image aspect ratio should have been. And it's made an assumption. It assumes it's square pixels that the pixels are as wide as they are tall. Whereas in actual fact, I know that this is anamorphic, it's a, a two to one image ratio, and I also happen to know that the frame rate should be 24 on this one and not 25, or if you dragged it into your sequence, it might be 30. And what I'm actually going to do is delete the sequence. So I've got the sequence selected here, and I'm just gonna click the little bin icon at the bottom and that's gone. Now I'm going to select the footage, and I'm gonna right click on the footage, and I'm going to go down to modify and then in modify we've got one that says interpret footage click on the interpret footage and the interpret footage dialog box comes up and the first thing it's saying is it's using the frame rate of 25 frames per second whereas I'm going to say assume this frame rate and I'm just going to change it to 24 and the other thing it says pixel aspect ratio at the moment it says assume it is square whereas I need to tell it to conform to and then it's giving me a drop down and I can choose and I know that it should be anamorphic two to one and click on that. Now the other thing that it might have is you might say as it got field orders, this is progressive, it's not interlay, so it's saying use the field order from the file. In other words, it is a progressive scan, one image after another, not with fields. So I've done all of that. I can now click OK. And now when I take this piece of footage and I drag it down to the new items icon to create a new sequence, you'll see that it interprets it fully the way it should look. So that's how you can bring in an image sequence and that's how we can interpret the footage so that when we bring it to a new sequence it's as it should look as opposed to being all squished. But clearly we can now see that there's problems with this that we need to address in future tutorials.